Amidwood seems like a never-ending stream of new crossovers hitting the market. It's so refreshing when an automaker doesn't give up on one of the segments that we love, like the compact hatch. And thankfully, Mazda is one of those very companies. This, the fourth generation Mazda 3, is probably their best argument yet against buying a new crossover, especially now because this guy has all-wheel drive for the first time, which makes it even more compelling. So each of the previous generation Mazda 3s was handsome, at least to some degree, but we think the fourth generation is actually the best looking one yet. It's very clean and simple design here. You're not going to see any hard creases or hard lines in the body panels. Instead, Mazda said it worked to have the sun reflect over the panels in the most complementary light possible. And you can tell that everything is actually kind of rounded out. And the face of the Mazda 3. How could you not love this face? It's adorable. Two major points of distinction between the hatch and the sedan, the hood and the lower rocker panels are the only big pieces of sheet metal that are actually shared in between the two. Kind of cool. Then it also breaks down to the accents as well. Here with the hatchback, we have these black outlines that go underneath the headlights, uh, and then the black trim continues underneath the blacked out grille. The sedan uses a chrome trim piece that goes underneath. Uh, and then there's no ducts, no accents, intakes, very simple, very clean design. We're also missing fog lights. Those were here for the previous generation, not here anymore. Whoa, we skipped over the side profile. Don't, don't worry, we'll get there in a second, trust me. But look at the back half of the Mazda 3. I actually think it's almost as handsome as the front half, and that's a hard trick to pull off. The same black outlining continues around the taillights here, just like it does on the headlights. Uh, and then this back piece of glass, that has some serious rake to it. I mean, it slopes down quite a bit, kind of bubbles the rear end of the car out but still very cohesive, very satisfying to look at overall. Mm, not everything can be perfect, right? So let's talk about that. Now let me start by giving Mazda the benefit of the doubt. Sometimes it's hard to nail the proportions on such a small car compact hatch like this. But what the hell happened here? Look at the C-pillar. It is huge, like actually huge. Now look at it from this angle. And now look at it from this angle. I think it sort of looks like a jelly bean. To be fair, some people love it. I'm just not one of those people. So the news from the cabin is good news. Some car designers, they get lost in this whole trying to put in all these different materials and these weird angles all over the interior just to make a statement. Mazda did not fall victim to that at all. You have this huge piece of trim that goes across the dash, runs into the steering wheel, and then you get the second tiered part of the dash that looks really good as well. Here we have red. We drove a sedan earlier that had a white piece of trim, matches the seats. Looks good in both instances, and it sort of accentuates the star of the show, which is this 8.8-inch infotainment setup, not a touchscreen. So the previous generation car had that touchscreen, and now it's gone completely in favor of this guy, which is a little rotary knob. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are standard on all versions of the hatchback. That's great. And this 8.8-inch screen is also standard on every hatchback trim. Good stuff. Everything in this car is pushed forwards. So last gen car, touch screen is right here. Now, this bigger screen gets pushed back into the dash as do the gauge cluster. And then this new heads up display, which doesn't have that sort of plasticky piece. Now it's projected onto the windshield. It looks much better. Every major touch point is super soft, very premium feeling. There's a couple things missing, just a few that you kind of wonder, is this a full premium interior? There's no AC vents in the rear. That's strange to me. No ventilated seats. There are heated seats here. No heated steering wheel. That was available on the previous gen car, but not here. So much like the design, you can't talk about a new Mazda and not talk about how it drives. We'll start with the powertrain. They make it easy on us because there's only one option. It's a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder. It's good for 186 horsepower and 186 pound feet of torque. You get a choice between a six-speed automatic or a six-speed manual, but there's a caveat with the latter. This car right here is equipped with the six-speed automatic. With the manual, it's only available in the front-wheel drive hatch. As of this moment in time, you can't match all-wheel drive with the manual. To come, who knows? So when you have a car that's naturally aspirated, not turbocharged, um, it's probably going to be a little gutless when you're this high up in the air. And honestly, that's pretty true. Uh, we spent a lot of time driving it today and more often than not, you picks up, it picks up, but you kind of wish that this thing had more guts to it. The gearbox is smooth, it's good, it does everything it needs to do, but the shift time is a little bit laggier than you'd like it to be. You'd wish it was a little snappier. Um, maybe we're just spoiled now. We have eight speed and nine speeds, 
all over different segments in the industry and this one feels a little lackluster compared to those. There are two huge gold stars for the Mazda 3, steering and the chassis. Uh, the steering feels really, really good. It's probably my favorite thing uh, about how this car drives across the board. Similar is the chassis, very compliant, very smooth. Really between those two things, the steering and the chassis, what you're left with is the assumption that this car can handle a lot more power than 186 horsepower. And we're sure it can. What does that mean? Mazda Speed 3. Say it. Let's all say it. Because the more we say it, the bigger the likelihood that Mazda's going to build one. So without question, the biggest statement the new Mazda 3 makes is in the way it looks. It looks really, really good from most angles. But you back that up with killer driving dynamics and a completely reworked cabin. It's a really compelling package, especially for the money. Speaking of money, the all-wheel drive cars, in terms of the hatch, start at $25,000, and then the premium package, which is the most expensive, is $28,900. It's really not bad considering what you're getting here. The only question that remains is will people buy this over a crossover? For that, we wait to find out.